Welcome to worship for the Modesto Free Methodist Church. I would like to start us off in prayer. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for all these wonderful people that have volunteered to worship you, God. And God, I pray that for everybody out there that is consumed by fear for everything that is happening, God, I, I, I pray that you come by and you just wipe that fear away, God, and you let them know that you are protecting them. God, because that is what you do. You keep us from all harm, God. And, we, and I thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you bless this worship that we give to you. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. Imitate, Imitate God, God, therefore, therefore in everything, everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Your mind. 
and pray. Lord, I bring you the, the terrible world we're living in, these evil days, Lord, everything that's going on right now, coronavirus, just so many things that can bring us down, Lord, but you know that we can get through this together, and with, you, with your love in our lives, you, we can do anything, Lord, so just help us in everything that we go through anything that we do, anything that we say, and just bless us all, Lord. May you help us on this day, and may everything be well. In, G in your name I pray, amen. Welcome, everybody, to the service. I love doing all this stuff being filmed every week. I'm the star. I'm the star. No, I'm the star. I'm the star. I don't think either one of you are stars. I think you guys are seeing stars. How about a little bit of humility here? I guess so. Well, we're just here to show the kids we love them. Yeah, I love the kids. Okay. Hey. By the way, when is service going to start? You know what? That's the great news. I just found out. 
We had some people meeting and working out all the details that we have to do before we start. And we're going to start on June 14th. That's two weeks from today. Wow. And, and what are all the things you had to work out? Well, we had lots of stuff to work out. Like one thing is everybody has to wear masks. Everybody? Yes. And the only time we're not wearing masks is up here with the worship team because they're far enough from the front row. But every, everybody has to wear a mask to the service. Like COVID masks? Well, any kind of covering. Can I use my bandana? Yes. Put it on. Okay, guys. Stick them up. We're taking the offering. Oh, we're not going to take the offering in the, in the aisles either. We're going to have offering box because we don't want to pass an offering plate. Really? Yeah, that's right. What about people that are sick? Well, if they're sick, they need to stay home. And we're, I just found out this morning that Wilda bought some temperature scanner things, and we can scan people's temperatures before they come, as they come in the door. Wow, that's a lot of rules. Are we going to have to social distance? Yeah, we're going to have to sit six feet apart. And that means that we can only get about 50 people in here, maybe some in the foyer. So we're going to have two services, maybe three. We're going to have 9.30 and 11 o'clock English services, and then we're might probably also going to have a Spanish service. So we may have three services, although the Spanish service might wait for a while to start. They're still deciding. Wow! So two weeks from today, we get to have church. No, we've been having church, but it's been church at home. Oh, we get to have church here. That's exciting. It's been like three months. Okay, do the kids get to sit in the front? No, the kids are going to have to sit with their parents. But what if they're little? Well, their parents can put them on their laps so that they can see. Well, they're not going to be patient enough to sit through your boring sermons. Well... The church service is only going to last 45 minutes. We're going to have two songs and a kid's message. And the kid's message is going to be up here so that they can see you and Rat. And then, after that, it's going to be a short message. And so uh, the kids are going to be just fine sitting through the service. They'll have to learn how to sit still. They'll never sit still. Can they wiggle a little? Yeah, they can wiggle a little. Oh, that's great. Say... How come people wear masks anyway when some of them are like young and not at risk? Well, we wear masks because of the Bible. The Bible doesn't say you wear masks. Yeah, it does. Where? It says in the Bible, it says that love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. So even if you don't need to wear a mask for yourself, you should wear it for your neighbor who might be at risk to get the COVID. So wearing a mask is loving your neighbor? That's right. Oh, I never looked at it that way. So even though I'm a puppet and rat is a rat, I'm a rat. We should wear a mask just to make other people feel more comfortable? Yeah, that's right. That's why we do it. I don't want to wear a mask. Would you do it to make someone feel more comfortable? Rats don't care. I'll just avoid people. Okay, you can just avoid people, but Tommy, you're going to have to wear a mask. Really? But not when you're up speaking, okay? Because it interferes with speaking. Plus, we're far enough away. All right. That sounds good. I want to help other people feel comfortable. Don't you? Yeah, that's what we do. Hey, kids, looking forward to seeing you in two weeks. 9.30 or 11. Or if you speak Spanish, you can come to the later service. God bless you. God bless everybody. Well, I'm so excited about uh, actually ha having some uh, folks in here when we do our message and our singing and actually having a corporate worship and, and uh, people to actually listen, live people to listen, uh, other than just the worship team. So I'm really excited about that. I'll see you in two weeks, and you can uh, look for the information on the, the services that we'll be having. We're going to be contacting everyone. We also are going to be doing a survey uh, because... 
we need to find out and make sure that we have enough chairs because we have to social distance. We're going to be doing a survey to find out if you're interested in going to the first or second or possibly a third service, the Spanish service. So we'll be doing that survey to try to get an idea of how even the spread is going to be on the different services that we're doing and whether we have enough chairs. So you'll be hearing about that the next week. One of the things that I've noticed about all this COVID stuff, it seems like almost like people are being placed on hold. And I found this. Have you, ever, all of us have been placed on hold on calls, right? Especially like if you call one of the public utilities, they've got a, a, a whole bunch of stuff you need to go through and hitting different dials and eventually you get placed on hold. And I thought that was really funny. Your call is very important to us. Please continue to hold. Nobody likes their life being placed on hold, and it does seem like the whole world is on hold right now. Here in this next picture, by the way, that is not a parking lot. That is the traffic jam leading from mainland China into Hong Kong. Are you glad you don't do that commute? Talk about being placed on hold and we are asking the question, when is life going to be back to normal? I'm not a person that likes to wait in line. It's the way that God teaches me patience. And I've been learning a lot of patience lately. But when is life going to return to normal? When are we going to get back to eating in the restaurants, going to church, hugging, shaking hands, instead of not, 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 wait, wait, wait? It does seem like life is placed on hold, doesn't it? Well, the Free Methodist Church is not on hold. This week we're having annual conference. Actually, it's gonna, we're recording this on Saturday, and right when we're done recording this, Sabino and I are going to go and, and watch annual conference as a webinar. And uh, we're part of a larger network of churches so that we can spread the good news of Jesus Christ here and in our state and nation and all across the world. And here's what it says, uh, what our superintendent wrote about what an annual conference is. When the leaders of the Free Methodist Churches gather annually to seek God's face, conduct church business, choose its leaders, envision life under the reign of Christ, and equip disciples to serve, we call this annual conference. And uh, our conference superintendent is up for election this year. He's elected for every four years. And every year, all our pastors are appointed to the churches by a committee in the conference composed of equal numbers of clergy and lay people called the Ministerial Appointments Committee. So that's going to happen in just a few minutes. Our conference is not on hold. The church is not on hold. The Free Methodist Church is not on hold. We continue our mission here and throughout the world. We're not on hold locally either. We've had a lot of changes. We've gone to online services, video Zoom meetings. We have a group of people that do phone care every week and make dozens of phone calls. And now we're gearing up to start our church again, the public services, with a, a list of guidelines, single space, that goes, covers a whole page. When are we restarting? In two weeks. And we're going to work all that stuff out. So we're not on hold here either. We've been going forward, and many of you have uh, responded to our online services. We appreciate that and continue to refer those to see other people, um, to other people who can watch them. And we try and have been trying to share the good news of Jesus Christ in every service. You know, God's mission never goes on hold. It goes forward. Our mission as believers is to love God, love people, and share the good news. His love never fails, it never stops. Our mission of sharing his love never fails, never stops. That's because God controls the timeline of history. That's the message of all the end times prophecy. And also as a believer, you know that you have a mission. You're part of God's timeline in history. He has a timeline for you. Your life, even though it may seem like it's on hold, it's not on hold. Your life, if it's in the center of God's will, is part of his unfolding plan for your life, and you're part of a bigger plan for the whole world. And when you are aligned with God's mission in the center of his will, the course of your life is never on hold. Sometimes you might pause, 
Because you need to, like it says in Psalm 23, be beside the still waters. You need to rest, listen to God's voice. Maybe for some of you that means going fishing, enjoying food and fellowship. Sometimes we may seem like our life is on hold, but really we are just pausing for refreshment, a special Sabbath. But you're always on path, always on mission. Now the Apostle Paul addressed a church way back, thousands of years ago, that was tempted to be paralyzed by the evil that was unfolding around them. Evil days, he calls it. Perhaps it was persecution. Perhaps not being able to meet openly, but needing to meet in secret. And he has some encouragement, some words of encouragement that I want for us all to hear this morning. It's from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And these are some of my very favorite verses. In fact, I actually memorized these verses when I was attending a Methodist church as a junior high uh, kid. And when I went through confirmation classes, which is a teaching discipleship type of a class with our pastor, he made us memorize the fifth chapter of Ephesians. And, of course, the first part was always easier uh, to memorize. I memorized it in the King James, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to read it in the uh, New Living Translation. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. A life of becoming like Jesus, becoming like God, is a life of love that's never on hold. Think about that a moment. God's love is never on hold. So if you feel like you're living on hold, and maybe this is not just a time of refreshment, of being still, but you're living in a time of frustration of being on hold. Maybe you don't have a job. Your job is on hold. Uh, your kids are not going to school. Your kids are on hold. You can't go out and uh, enjoy the time in, out in nature because all the parks are closed. Your life feels like it's on hold. Remember what the Apostle Paul says here in Ephesians, not only the first uh, part of the chapter 5 in Ephesians, but also I'm going to read verses 14 through 16. He says, For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. So what does he say to us? Wake up! Wake up! People of God, wake up! This is not a life. This is not a time in our history of our country and our community to be sleeping. Wake up! People of God, arise! You are not part of this evil world. You're called to be different, not asleep. You're called to be awake. You're called to be light in a dark world. And so it says, make the most of every opportunity, especially even in these evil days. This week, we saw how evil these days are. I met with my men's Bible study on Wednesday night. There was about four. Besides me, there was about four guys there. Three of the guys were older than me. I'm in my 60s. Three of the guys were older than me, and one was younger. They're all white guys. And one of the things that they brought up and talked about was how horrified they were when they saw the video of George Floyd basically on the ground and with a foot on his neck and basically choked to death over a period of minutes. We were horrified by it. How evil that is. An unlawful lawman. And then later on in the week, we saw rioters and looters destroying a Target and an AutoZone and some other things. Lawless rioters and looters. And when I saw those things, I thought, oh, in these evil days, 
We so much need the light and the love of God, don't we? More than ever, it is time for Christians, it's time for the church to wake up and say, that man with his thirst for power, to show power over an individual or to exercise power by looting and vandalizing and destroying, man with his thirst for power alone is evil. And we desperately need the light and love of God in these evil, dark days. Christians, wake up. Be salt and light. Be love wherever you are. Make the most of every opportunity. We can't afford to live life on hold. We have to live a life of meaning no matter what is happening in this world. How do we do that? We do it by living a life filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how we live a life that's on mission, not on hold. And so in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, and I encourage you to read and meditate on that this week. Later in the the chapter, verse 17, he says this, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. So pray and think about what is it that God wants me to do? He will give you direction. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. People are tempted to go back to bad habits. They just want to avoid and and leave this world. It's so evil. He says, don't do that. You need to be engaged. Engaged through the Holy Spirit. He says, not speaking hate and evil and evil actions, but he says, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. Be light, be love, be a song in your world. And he says, and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So to a church that is probably being tempted to hide from persecution, to disengage from the world, the Apostle Paul says, no, be light. Engage in this dark world. Be joy. Sing songs of joy. Be thankful. Restore perspective, not only for yourself, but for those around you. Take advantage of every opportunity that you have. And the more evil the days are, the more brightly your light will shine. The more hate there is, the more love will stand out. Then Paul goes on in the rest of the chapter to describe the spirit-filled life. And I'm not going to get into all that. You can read that and meditate on that. He gives specific instructions for men and women, husbands, wives, kids, um, bosses. He talks about slaves and all kinds of things in there. He goes on to describe, here's what this, in application, here's what the spirit-filled life is like. Because the spirit-filled life is never on hold. It's not asleep, it's awake. Awake to opportunities every day. So when you wake up in the morning, pray, Lord, give me an opportunity to do something great for you today, to show your love, to serve you, to bring light in the darkness. Lord, help me to live in your spirit today. In the name of Jesus, pray. And I'd like to pray that prayer right now. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray Help us as the church to wake up, to be light in the darkness, love that destroys hate. Help us to make it every opportunity an opportunity for people to see and know that Jesus is Lord. Help us to live our lives in joy and thankfulness, even in these evil days. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. God bless you. You have a wonderful week.